This season, I've made two holiday soaps. The first one, I couldn't get the inside to look right, and the second, I couldn't get the top to look right. Now it's time to get my butt in gear and make the ultimate gingerbread soap. And I'm gonna add three secret ingredients that are gonna level it up. Let's plan it. Now, I want someone to pick up the soap and say, oh my god, an elf made this. So I wanna push a strong, spicy gingerbread fragrance, and I'm just hiding two of those secret ingredients that I'll discuss later in the video. I'm gonna go way over the top with the accessories. I want gumdrops, I want sprinkles, I want gingerbread people, I want it all. Since the top is so extra, I'm gonna pull back a bit with the interior and give it a pretty simple design. Just white for the frosting and brown for the gingerbread. I'm gonna DIY a cardboard cutout to get those Batman teeth looking things in the top of the soap to make it really look like frosting oozing over an eaves trough. Now I'm just gonna blur out the last little secret ingredient because you really think I'm gonna give you all the goodies at the start? Just finishing up this little sketch, you can see how I'm orienting the gumdrops and the gingerbread person and stuff and blah blah blah. Let's get going. I have gumdrops to make, which means I need to source a mold. I searched Etsy and saw this mold for $21 Canadian, but with the additional $20 shipping, I made peace with the fact that I wasn't about to spend $40 on something I'd use once. Luckily, there was a sale on the silicone mold making kit from Amazon. I picked it up for around $20 Canadian, and given the volume of silicone that's supplied, I can get two molds out of this, which means I can make my own gumdrop mold for only 10 bucks. I couldn't find gumdrops anywhere. I found these sour dots on Amazon, and they ended up being the perfect imposter for my gumdrops. So now that I've found my candy, I can get started on making the mold. I fashioned a horrendous looking mold out of a recycled cake mix box, then I glued my little gumdrop imposters inside. <coughs> On opening my silicone mold making kit, my confidence was knocked down a peg because of the, uh, how do I say this, lack of coherent English. I'm definitely glad the silicone is true odorless and water-like smooth, and I can't fault them for giving me a nice little card. As we all know, the highest good is like that water. All teasing aside, the kit works well, so yeah. I'll link the Amazon in the description if you happen to want some silicone mold maker. This kit comes with two components, liquid aqua and liquid see-through and I need to blend them at a one-to-one -one ratio to get my silicone solution. I have about an hour of working time, which is great because it'll minimize bubbles and minimize bubbles, and it also allows the bubbles to be minimized. Once the solution is ready to go, it's time for my gumdrops to take a gooey bath. While the silicone cures, I'm gonna get started with my gingerbread people. I'm using clear, no sweat melt and pour base from Voyager Soap and Candle, which is where I get most of my supplies from. I'm gonna chippity chop, and then those chunks get thrown into the microwave. To give these gingerbread people complexion, I'm gonna throw in some brown oxide, which I'm gonna tell you from the start was a mistake. This brown gives a robust, chocolatey color, and I should have held way back so I could make it more of a pale golden brown color you know, the color of actual gingerbread. I tried reversing time with a little buttercup yellow mica to make it look less like chocolate and more like yellow chocolate, I guess. Yeah, you can see the yellow literally dissolved into nothing, <laughs> case in point. When I make mistakes, I cannot move on. I'm a dweller. I just dwell and try to fix it, even if it's pointless. I got these gingerbread slash candy cane molds off of Amazon for around $12 for the two of them, which is a great price for little silicone molds. And these gingerbread people happen to be the perfect size for my application. Now it's time for me to break them in with my delicious looking chocolate sauce. Speaking of chocolate sauce, I have a question. Why does soap look delicious? <laughs> And I know I'm not the only one who thinks that because I, I posted my peppermint soap on Reddit a couple weeks ago and you guys must be malnourished or something because a lot of you wanted to eat my soap. Someone even said they would curse like a sailor just so they can have it in their mouth and okay, me. Here's my little ginger person and he's looking good. After peeling them from my molds, my gingerbread people ended up looking a little bland. So I decided to mix up a little paint made from titanium dioxide and isopropyl alcohol so I can give them all the facelift of their dreams. The real challenge here was finding the right paint consistency. At first I made it way too thin and messed up. <laughs> But I eventually arrived at a consistency I was happy with. I learned it needs to look and feel sort of like whiteout paint. That's the way that worked for me if you want to try it out for yourself. My army is assembled. One was severed, but that's okay. Let's take a look at how that gumdrop mold is doing. My definitely not sloppy mold wasn't fully sealed, so there was a little bit of leakage, and yes, while I poured it, I did see the leaking, and did feel a panic that lingered for the evening. This stuff is the weirdest consistency when it's cured. It feels like a really firm, cold jello. But it's not wet, it's just slightly sticky. 
And yes, that is a good way to describe how I am in the summer. Cold jello in the morning, sticky jello by night. What, the, what am I writing? <laughs> Removing these candies was not a pleasant experience at all. I know a lot of people get great pleasure out of removing things from other things. I am not one of those people. It feels like I'm removing seven sugary little parasites from this poor mold and ugh, I don't know. It was just an intense sensory experience for my hands and I wish not to experience it again. Now, for first, I made things unreasonably difficult for myself by designing seven cavities into the mold when I need at least 32 gumdrops for the soap. Also, seven cavities sounds like a terrible time at the dentist. I want to make all the colors of the rainbow for these gumdrops, so this is going to take some time. Starting with the red, I'm going to Roy G. Biv my way to the end and toss the mold into the freezer for a few minutes so I can cycle through the colors pretty quickly. It's quite frowned upon in the soap making community to rapidly cool your melt and pour in any way, but I'm using no sweat melt and pour and my gumdrops aren't dropping below room temperature, so don't disown me. For the rest of the colors, I'm just copy and pasting what I did with the red, so enjoy this nice little montage. I have to admit, these are A tier gumdrops. They have a nice rough texture from the sugar, but to take them to S tier, don't ask me why there's an S tier, I don't know. I'm gonna toss them in some super sparkle mica to give them that lustrous sparkle that gumdrops are known for. Before we start making the soap, we've gotta prepare our two colors. White, which I'll make with titanium dioxide, and a gingerbread brown sort of color, which I'll make by using the same exact technique I used with my two brown gingerbread people, because I guess if it broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not very good at thinking things through when doing anything with a stress level above straining my pasta water, so welcome, my name is Chris. I'm using the gingerbread fragrance from Voyager. I was a little worried about using this one because it was the only gingerbread fragrance they had and it only had one review, which was positive, but when spending $12 on anything, I want to make sure that other people wasted their money before me. But I'm glad I bought it because this fragrance, it smells like the spice trade. The scent is just a really nice blend of cinnamon and clove with that nutty molasses kick to impart a genuine gingerbread aroma. Finally, the time has come for me to pour the skinny liquid into the skin slimy liquid. And trust me, this time I definitely won't unplug the stick blender. Except I'll sploosh oil out. Sploosh. Is there such a thing as visual ASMR? Because the blending of oil and lye water makes me happy, and I, I don't know why. It's probably one of the reasons I got into soap making, to be honest. There's just something so right about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe I'm just weird and I like uniformity, I don't know. And yes, stupid drip, I can see you. I'm keeping the batter pretty thin because it's now time to add those three secret ingredients I promised to show you. Let's rapid fire. First, ginger powder because gingerbread without ginger is just bread. Second secret, ground coffee. This is gonna add those nice little brown speckles to the brown portion of the soap and provide a little bit of exfoliation. Third and final secret, fancy molasses. Yes, everyone, I'm adding real molasses to soap because this is a gingerbread soap and it just wouldn't feel right not adding it. Since molasses has sugar, it's gonna accelerate the batter and cause it to heat up. If the soap gets past seven degrees Celsius, it'll run away into gel phase and I don't really want that because I don't prefer it. So I've kept my oils and lye water cooler today to avoid that. There are a few reasons why you'd wanna add sugar to soap. The primary reason seems to be that sugar improves lather by reducing the surface tension of the water and helping soap bubbles last longer. And I don't know, anyone who doesn't like a good lather. Also, I'm just gonna add that I threw in all my fragrance and all my brown colorant to this portion. I wanna get it to a pretty thick trace so I can shape it without having to wait around. So I'm gonna blend it for a little while. You know what it looks like? It looks like Willy Wonka's Chocolate River. A chocolate river. I didn't make the gingerbread color I dreamed of, but I'll be a liar if I said I didn't wanna suck it through a straw. Here's my little cardboard Batman teeth cutout and I'm just raking it gently along the top. Now I've just gotta add some titanium dioxide pudding to the rest of my soap batter to make delicious looking vanilla custard and pour that gently over my gingerbread pudding.
Before I let it rest, I'm going to simulate a magnitude 1 earthquake, and now it's time for the loaf to nap and saponify. While my loaf transforms from cursed custard to baneful butter, I'm going to prepare my frosting. Since it's one color all the way through, I'm just adding the rest of my titanium dioxide pudding and blending it into the oils with my stick blender so it's nice and uniform. I decided to transfer my oils to a narrower container, thinking the stick blender wouldn't go deep enough, which is reasonable thinking on my part, except I didn't realize the container I transferred it to was leaking on me. Once I got it all moved to a new container, I added the lye solution off camera for some reason, and now I'm just blending it basically as thick as my blender will allow, which took a minute or two. Once it gets past a certain thickness, you just gotta beat it manually until it's ready to go. Now if you have eyes, you can probably see that my piping style leaves a lot to be desired, and that's because I'm used to piping buttercream, which has a different consistency. I don't know what it is about soap batter, but it's simultaneously slippery, but keeps its form. If you've made soap before, you probably know what I'm talking about. Now, watching this back is really cringy. I mean, you could see how I'm just pulling the piping bag like that. Yeah, don't do that if you want nice billowy looking frosting. Luckily, I'm gonna cover up those dastardly peaks with my gingerbread people. Eight lucky ones will be selected to decorate the top of the soap, and the rest will be banished to darkness until they're melted into something else. Now those gingerbread people are looking a little lonely, so I'm going to give them some gumdrops. I only have enough room for two on each side, and I'm going to try to vary the colors enough so they work together on each bar. Now some of the more soap savvy viewers might notice that this particular soap design seems to take influence from Katie Carson's gingerbread village soaps, and that's because it did. Primarily because her design is ingenious, so I need to give credit where credit is due. Last touches before the soap sleeps and saponifies. I'm just giving everyone a little sprinkle shower. This is just a custom mix of red, green, and silver drages and jimmies. Most of them are going to fall off the soap, so I'm trying to cover as much of the top as possible. One final dusting of super sparkle mica to impart that fresh fallen snow look, and here we go everyone. This is my ultimate holiday soap. Three not so secret ingredients anymore, tons of holiday cheer. This soap is gonna sleep and saponify, and then it's ready to cut. I had ants in my pants waiting for this loaf to saponify. I was so excited to see how that weird cardboard thing turned out and if it would even resemble anything close to actual gingerbread. The loaf was quite firm, which I'm guessing was caused by the molasses, which is good because it means no ugly fingerprints. I really should wear gloves while cutting the soap, but I also hate using single plastic gloves like that, so commando it is. The time has come. Let's see how that inside looks. Okay, that one doesn't count. Let's really see how the inside looks. And there we have it. I'm actually really happy with how the design worked out. In hindsight, I should have measured out my titanium dioxide because frosting A and frosting B are two distinct shades of white, so that's one thing I would improve upon in the future. Also, I was right to add all the extra drages and jimmies and stuff to the top because look at this absolute battlefield of sprinkles. In any case, let's go to the product shots. I gotta say, I gotta pat myself on the back for this one. The top is just a sweet little microcosm of some magical gingerbread kingdom, but can we just talk about that weird line between the frosting and the gingerbread? Like, hello? <laughs> I see you. With these close-ups, you can really see the specks of coffee that really contribute to that spiced gingerbread look. And speaking of gingerbread, these smell like a bakery delight. The fragrance isn't super heavy on the cookie part and is more spice oriented, but what can I say? So am I. Whee! I call this soap Gingerbread Lane because it's the lane I can say with relative confidence that I can stay in. I love my frosty and peppery, but this one takes the cake, or gingerbread. That was a soap journey with the soap universe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.